Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Gatsy on Goosebumps, the only show in which I read and review every single Goosebumps book from R.L. Stein's original series. Today, we are looking at Goosebumps number 62, Monster Blood 4, which is the final, final book in the original Goosebumps series. We've finally made it, done all 62, we've done every single one. Somewhat fitting that the final one will be uh, another Monster Blood uh, title. This is the only um, quadrilogy in the original Goosebumps series, only book to get four in the series. And I think it's worth just having a refresher on um, Monster Blood, the series and the substance. Monster Blood 1 features Evan and his new friend Andy um, buying this can of, this toy like called Monster Blood that keeps growing and growing and then some of his dog eats it and then at the end it turns out that Monster Blood was caused to grow by Evan's aunt's cat, who is actually a witch, who gets knocked into the Monster Blood by his giant dog, which causes everything to shrink back to normal. This is a really, really stupid plot point, and all reference to Monster Blood being magical was dropped subsequently. If you'll permit me to read from <laughs> the Monster Blood entry on Goosebumps Wiki, the monster blood shouldn't grow after the first book, since Sarabeth, the witch who cursed the monster blood, dies at the end of the book. This causes the monster blood to shrink. This means that the books Monster Blood 2, 3, and Monster Blood for Breakfast shouldn't grow or be able to make things giant. Even if Sarabeth curses all the monster blood in the world, all the monster blood would shrink away. Regardless, despite this glaring plot hole, uh, monster blood continues to be featured in Monster Blood 2 and 3 and continues to have the same effects even though there's no logical explanation for it whatsoever. So Monster Blood 2 features um, Andy, who by the way saw all the effects of Monster Blood in the first book, finding out that there's still a tiny bit left over and using it to uh, get revenge on Evan's teacher, um, which turns out disastrously. It makes the class hamster grow really big until it just expires. Monster Blood 3, again, features Andy wanting to use Monster Blood for revenge, despite going through these two really, really bad things. And she uses it to try and get revenge on Evan's really annoying bratty cousin, Kermit, uh, but Evan ends up drinking it, or eating it, becomes really big, and then Kermit creates a shrinking formula to shrink him back. Anyway, that's where we are. We've got this cast of characters, Pretty well established. I like that about the series, that um, it does follow the same characters. Um, and, you know, it does explore their relationships a bit more. There's also the, the school bully, Conan, introduced in Monster Blood 2. You know, um, none of these, of course, make any sense whenever Monster Blood is, as established in the first book, just a toy that had a curse put on it. When you realise that uh, human beings have uh, 12 years to um, effectively stop um, catastrophic results of climate change, it's not that important. But if you don't think about that, then it really is. And that brings us to Monster Blood 4. Really nice cover art here depicting the uh, the creatures uh, that will feature in the book. I love the aesthetic here. Tim Jacobs has done such a good job with the pink and blue and the, like, the, the, the pastel colours of the bathroom. I love it. And, you know, all these... I just, you know, love how much character he puts into these things. Like, there's one, you know, sucking on the the shower, there's one checking himself out in the mirror. It's just great. He does really good work, most of the time. The tagline is, this blood is bad to the bone. Good alliteration. And blurb reads as follows. It's four times as evil. Evan Ross can't forget about monster blood, the evil green slime that never stops growing. It can turn ordinary pets into ferocious animals, monster blood too, and 12 year old kids into freakish giants, monster blood three. But now there's a new kind of monster blood in town. It comes in a can just like the others. Only difference is this blue s this only difference is this slime is blue instead of green. And instead of growing, it's multiplying into terrifying blue creatures with razor sharp teeth. Kermit is still trying to get his cousin Evan in trouble for some reason, he's a real dick, and uh, Conan is still trying to bully Evan because he's a dick, but his motivations are more clear because he's he presumably had a Shit childhood. Yeah, Andy discovers this can of blue monster blood. Why does she keep obsessing over this stuff every time you find it and try to like check it out and have fun with it, something terrible happens. So if this thing is quite similar to monster blood, why are you playing with it? Anyway, she finds it in a basement or something or a 
parents' basements. Can of blue slime instead of green. As the book says, it doesn't grow, it multiplies into these blue creatures, and the plot is our heroes trying to deal with these these multiplying blue little blobs. Um, they suck the moisture out of everything, um, and every time they do, they grow big and then explode and become two, and every time they multiply, they become meaner each time. So they start off quite cute, and they start, like, becoming really vicious. They've got razor-sharp teeth. They try to, like, suck the moisture out of people. Pretty good, like, effective monster, actually. Like, pretty good challenge for the, uh... Our, uh, protagonists to overcome. I appreciate the characters go through multiple different um, solutions to this problem. I think first they try and electrocute them with Kermit's electrified invisible fence that he's set up because he's a scientific genius. Um, another one they try and give it some of um, Kermit's mum's really hot sauce that she makes, hot spaghetti. Um, but these are both ideas that have been established earlier on in the book, so it like, makes sense that they're going to try and use them. But in the end, uh, they just keep multiplying until they get so mean they turn on each other and eventually eat each other until there's none left. Now that doesn't make sense, because if they keep eating each other until there's down to two, I don't think two living organisms can consume each other until there's nothing. There would be one left. That's not even science. That's... Eating. <laughs> Regardless, that's how they get rid of them. In the end, a scientist turns up. I developed the blue liquid in my lab, Professor Crane explained. It was supposed to be a monster fighting force for underwater combat, a special army of fighters who would get meaner and meaner and multiply underwater until they outnumbered the enemy. Cool idea, Kermit murmured, and then added, I guess. Professor Crane shrugged, but it didn't work. They got too mean. It was a bad experiment. So I don't know how Andy found top secret science experiment in a can. But yeah, it turns out it wasn't actually monster blood per se. But like, who cares? Monster blood isn't, it's never actually explained what it is. It's a toy that grows even though it shouldn't grow because the curse that was put on it was null and void. So who, who really cares? That, that's just a little explanation of what it is, uh, which is fine. Turns out there's a tiny bit left in the can and Conan, the uh, neighborhood bully, grabs it. And Evan's like, oh, we've got to stop him. And then Kermit's like, you know, we had so much trouble dealing with these blue things, we got so scared of them, let Conan deal with it, you know, let him find out what happens to those, those blue things, they start multiplying, let him deal with it, that'll be our revenge. And they'll end up eating each other anyway, so, you know, the problem will solve itself, it'll be fine. Evan led the way out the door. He couldn't keep a smile from spreading across his face. Conan probably wants us to help him round up the blue blobs, he thought. But to his surprise, he saw no blue blobs in the backyard. What's going on? Evan asked Conan. Conan grinned at him. I found that blue candy of yours, he, saw it. he said. Huh? Blue candy? Evan gasped. Conan nodded. Yeah, you remember. That candy you wouldn't share with me the other night. I found it and ate it. It was pretty good. Sticky, but good. But, but, Evan spluttered. Now I have just two small problems, Conan continued. For one thing, I can't stop drinking water. What's the other problem? Evan asked in a trembling voice. Look, Conan replied. He waved towards his backyard. A figure came running out from the house. Another Conan. That Conan was followed by two more Conans, and f the four Conans swept around Evan, Kermit, and Andy and formed a circle around them. This is my other problem, Conan said, narrowing his eyes menacingly at Evan. There are four of us now, and I don't know why, but we're feeling meaner than usual. I think that's a pretty good, like, cliffhanger, like, little twist at the end there, that he actually eats it and he multiplies himself. Because, <laughs> I guess because the implication is, they're going to get meaner until they start eating each other? I don't know. I would read about that in Monster Blood 5. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun book, you know. You've gotten to know these characters um, over the course of the series. Each time they add one, you know, Evan and Andy, then... No, Evan and Andy and Conan and then Kermit. And now it's like they're all together. You know, it works well. You know the characters very well. Um, and it's really, it's really fun how they, watching them try and deal with these, these blue things that keep multiplying. Um, and it's a really good resolution. Well, it's a fine resolution. And then the, the twist is really fun as well. So I think this is a really, really good way to cap off the Monster Blood series and the series of Goosebumps itself. You know, I don't think you can make too many other things grow that was sort of like really explored to death in the first three. The original Goosebumps, the original Monster Blood trilogy, if you will. Um, yeah, fun idea. And uh, uh, overall, a 
a solid end to the Goosebumps series. Well, that's all for this week, and also for Gatsy on Goosebumps as a regular series. There'll be a few more videos I need to release. I don't need to, but when you have a name like Gatsy on Goosebumps, you have a moral and legal obligation to explore a lot of other Goosebumps related things. There's a lot of things, you know, I haven't had a chance to talk about in the series, and I haven't touched on the other books in the series, the Goosebumps 2000, Choose Your Own Adventure. I'd like to like touch on those at least. Um, haven't even talked about the TV series, which I don't know how I would do that. Like I unironically love that TV series so much. Um, that deserves its whole own U YouTube review series. Um, but I, I can't, I don't know how I'd do that. It's, it, it takes, it takes longer to watch an episode than it does to read one of these books. Usually. So there are a few more videos coming out that will, you know, address the future of this series. But in the meantime, thank you so much for sticking with me for 62 books. Um, and please, just stay spooky. <laughs>